Hi friends, welcome to your online teacher. Our channel, we make science fiction interesting history and on-demand infotainments. Subscribe for more of such contents. Sun is a big ball of gas and plasma. Most of the gas, 91%, is hydrogen. It is converted into energy in the sun's core. The energy moves outward through the interior layers into the sun's atmosphere and is released into the solar system as heat and light. In the sun's core, gravitational forces create tremendous pressure and temperatures. The temperature of the sun in this layer is about 27 million degrees Fahrenheit, 15 million degrees Celsius. Hydrogen atoms are compressed and fused together, creating helium. This process is called nuclear fusion. As the gases heat up, atoms break apart into charged particles, turning the gas into plasma. The energy, mostly in the form of gamma-ray photons and neutrinos, is carried into the radiative zone. Photons can bounce around at random in this zone from somewhere between a few thousand to for about a million years before traveling to the surface, according to Stenode and Wald on NASA's Ask the Space Scientist page. Why don't we know how long it takes for a photon to travel outward from the center of the sun? For one thing, scientists can't see into the core to track the photon from its birth. Instead, they must rely on models that follow the infamous drunkard's walk problem. According to this scenario, the distance a drunken person travels while making random left and right turns is their typical step size times the square root of the number of steps taken. For a randomly traveling photon in the solar center, this depends on what is used for the mean free path or average distance travel of radiation. These numbers range from 4,000 years to millions of years, though most solar scientists tend to rely on 170,000 years. Photons go on a random whack within the sun, space scientist Lucy Green, a professor at the University of California, Los Angeles, I would say 170,000 years for photon to escape. Most astronomers are not too interested in this number and forego trying to pin it down exactly because it does not impact any phenomena we measure with the exception of the properties of the core region right now, Odenwald said. Scientists think the sun's magnetic field is generated by a magnetic dynamo in the radiative zone. The convection zone, also known as the convective region, is the outermost layer of the sun's interior. It extends from about 125,000 miles 200,000 kilometers, deep up to the visible surface or the sun's atmosphere. The temperature drops below 3.5 million degrees Fahrenheit 2 million degrees Celsius in the convective zone, where hot plasma bubbles up toward the surface. The convective motions carry heat quite rapidly to the surface, which is the bottom layer of the sun's atmosphere, or photosphere. This is the layer where the energy is released as sunlight. The light passes through the outer layers of the sun's atmosphere, the chromosphere and the corona. We usually can't see these layers, but during a total solar eclipse, the chromosphere looks like a red rim around the sun, and the corona forms a white crown with plasma streamers spreading outward. The chromosphere gets its red color from the abundance of hydrogen, according to the National Solar Observatory. Astronomers who have studied the composition of the Sun have cataloged 67 chemical elements in the Sun. There may be more, but it amounts too small for instruments to detect. Here is a table of the 10 most common elements in the Sun. 71 percentage of total mass of hydrogen, helium 27.1 percentage, oxygen 0.97 percentage, carbon 0.40 percentage, nitrogen 0.096 percentage, and others like silicon, magnesium, neon, iron and sulfur. The sun, as shown, be divided into six layers. From the center out the layers of the sun are as follows. The solar interior composed of the core, which occupies the innermost quarter or so of the sun's radius, the radiative zone, and the convective zone. Then there is the visible surface known as the photosphere, the chromosphere, and finally the outermost layer, the corona.
the energy produced through fusion in the sun's core powers the sun and produces all of the heat and light that we receive here on Earth. The process by which energy escapes from the sun is very complex. Since we can't see inside the sun, most of what astronomers know about this subject comes from combining theoretical models of the sun's interior with observational facts such as the sun's mass, surface temperature, and luminosity, total amount of energy output from the surface. All of the energy that we detect as light and heat originates from nuclear reactions deep inside the sun's high temperature core. This core extends about one quarter of the way from the center of Sun, where the temperature is around 15.7 million Kelvin K, or 28 million degrees Fahrenheit to its surface, which is only 5,778 K, cool. Above this corp, we can think of the Sun's interior as being like two nested spherical shells that surround the core. In the innermost shell, right above the core, energy is carried outwards by radiation. This radiative zone extends about three-quarters of the way to the surface. The radiation does not travel directly outwards in this part of the sun's interior. The plasma density is very high, and the radiation gets bounced around countless numbers of times, following a zigzag path outward. It takes several hundred thousand years for radiation to make its way from the core to the top of the radiative zone. In the outermost of the two shells, where the temperature drops below 2 million K 3.5 million degrees Fahrenheit, the plasma in the sun's interior is too cool and opaque to allow radiation to pass. Instead, huge convection currents form and large bubbles of hot plasma move up towards the surface, similar to a boiling pot of water that is heated at the bottom by a stove. Compared to the amount of time it takes to get through the radiative zone, energy is transported very quickly through the outer convective zone. The Sun's visible surface, the photosphere, is only about 5,800 K, 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Just above the photosphere is a thin layer called the chromosphere. The name chromosphere is derived from the word chromos, the Greek word for color. It can be detected in red hydrogen alpha light meaning that it appears bright red. Above the surface is a region of hot plasma called the corona. The corona is about 2 million K, 3.6 million degrees Fahrenheit, much hotter than the visible surface, and it is even hotter in a flare. Why the atmosphere gets so hot has been a mystery for decades, so his observations are helping to solve this mystery.